So let's take a look at how the new Ryzen 5600G and the Ryzen 5700G compare with the discrete graphics card, the NVIDIA RTX 3070. One of my viewers was keen to know of the performance of the Ryzen 5600G in Illustrator and After Effects. And rather than answer that specific question, we're going to have a look at some benchmarks for the Ryzen 5 5600G and the Ryzen 7 5700G and the RTX 3070 before we go into what I think will be a more meaningful, more balanced comparison between the performance of the RTX 3070 and the Ryzen 7 5700G in Adobe Premiere Pro and in Adobe After Effects. And as well as benchmarks and tests, I decided to see what the real life experience was by uh, putting together a project using just the Ryzen 5700G, working in 4K video in both After Effects and Premiere Pro. Now we'll start off with the CPU benchmarks. Both CPUs showed very impressive multi-core performances with the 16 cores of the Ryzen 5700G strongly outperforming the 12 cores of the 5600G. And I was really very impressed by the multi-core performance of the 5700G. In single thread performance, which is so important for graphics performance, uh, both processors are top tier performers but not quite in the league of the Apple M1 chip, as we saw in a previous video. Both CPUs are really strong recommendations for graphic processing workflows. Moving on to the GPUs, uh, as for the graphics processing units, comparing the 2D graphics performance for both APUs, they compared really well with the RTX 3070, both of them. However, when it comes to the 3D graphics, uh, there is a pretty wide delta between the APUs and the RTX 3070, showing that there is a lot of performance in the 3D uh, area, in the 3D arena, when it comes to these uh, powerful discrete graphics cards. Let's talk a little bit about the memory requirements. Uh, I want to look at the memory requirements for the APUs in Adobe Creative Cloud. Now for Photoshop, we should already know that we need at least two gigabytes of dedicated VRAM to activate the GPU processor related functions. Covered those in a previous video and I'll link to these videos in the description. However, I would recommend starting off with four gigabytes for Photoshop. It's gonna give you good performance. For Illustrator, we need three gigabyte for the onboard graphics. So three would be the starting point for Illustrator. Four gigabytes uh, applies for Premiere Pro and I believe also for After Effects, which generally follows Premiere in terms of its basic system requirements. Let's talk about the real life performance, the real life uh, testing of these APUs. I compared the performance of the Ryzen 7 5700G against the RTX 3070 in a setup that was using 64 gigabytes of system RAM. For the neatest comparison, I set the dedicated VRAM to eight gigabytes for the 5700G to match the eight gigabytes of VRAM in the RTX 3070. And I ran some tests. The aim of these tests was number one, to see how easy it was to use the 5700G graphics alone to compose and edit a 4K video. Number two, to test the performance in rendering a Premiere Pro project. Number three, to test performance in rendering an After Effects project. For test number one, the previous video that I did on the 5700G, the five and a half minute video on unified memory architecture was composed and edited and rendered using the 5700G alone. This was a setup where the onboard graphics serviced two 4K monitors with refresh rates of 60 Hertz and 30 Hertz respectively. So the experience went pretty smoothly. 
editing in After Effects was smooth with no difficulties at all in uh, doing this uh, simple 4K animation. This is a 4K animation which seemed to actually require less system memory to edit with the 5700G than when using the RTX 3070. And as some of you have noted in the in, in comments in previous videos, After Effects really does seem to use a vast amount of system RAM. Operating with 8GB of dedicated VRAM for the 5700G was not a problem. In Premiere Pro, it was relatively easy to edit the video on the 5700G, although the process was, on a couple of occasions, just a little less smooth for a couple of seconds than it would have been using the RTX 3070, but there weren't any really significant problems. Quick after note, whilst editing this video that you're now watching, I found it much easier to use the onboard graphics rather than the RTX 3070. The RTX 3070 had problems with playback of some 4K footage. This was unexpected and I felt worth noting. Unplugging the 3070, restarting the PC and using the onboard graphics alone, problem solved. Okay, back to the original broadcast. For test 2, rendering speeds, renders for After Effects and Premiere Pro were both done in Adobe Media Encoder, which usually provides the strongest processing speeds. Rendering a simple 5.5 minute 4K video was a good test of the processing capabilities of the Ryzen 5700G's hardware acceleration. And here I've been experiencing a bit of anxiety after a viewer left a, a comment a few months ago in indicating that the hardware acceleration was not available for rendering using AMD processors in Premiere Pro. Uh, this is not accurate, particularly when using Adobe Media uh, Encoder. And the AMD onboard graphics were able to accelerate video rendering to arrive at a fairly respectable speed, somewhat behind the much more capable RTX 3070. All in all, the performance in Premiere Pro suggests that it is still advisable to have some discrete GPU capability for very demanding 4K projects, certainly for 8K as well. But for simpler Premiere Pro projects, the onboard graphics are acceptably good and extremely good value. Test 3. In After Effects, the onboard graphics performed respectably well in terms of final render speed and also in day-to-day -day editing and they seem to use less RAM. That's something I really want to confirm with further testing and th this makes them extremely good value for the After Effects user. I even managed to get some video stabilization done on this stretch of the video, which was captured using a handheld camera without ridiculously long processing times. So drawing to a conclusion, impressive stuff. For projects that make heavy use of GPU accelerated filters, you still want to consider a discrete graphics card for both After Effects and Premiere. But all in all, the uh, state of uh, onboard graphics with the 5700G is excellent for much of the creative cloud. However, it should be noted that the Intel Iris GPUs for mobile devices also show excellent performance, possibly capable of outperforming the eight graphics cores of the 5700G. This suggests that we should long-term also keep an eye on what's happening over at Intel. The hope is that they might have something impressive for desktops perhaps in the coming year. That is it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.